Welcome back, students. Our focus this week will be on word endings. How do we make our words plural? Or maybe if we have a noun, how do we make it into an adjective form when we need to do that for grammar reasons? So let's take a look further on Chapter 9, Word Endings, Plurals, Nouns, and Adjectives. Now, why do we look at the word endings, and why are there problems with this? Well, we're going to concentrate on this because a lot of times, especially when we're working with dictated material, our word endings are swallowed up by the dictator. We can't always hear what they're saying, so we kind of have to have an idea in our head what they're saying. Um, also, we have irregular plurals or irregular words, or maybe we have foreign words, those French words that we looked at last week, or Latin or Greek words, um, and our endings are different. The rules for forming those different plurals or different endings are different than our regular English words. And again, we need to look at nouns versus adjectives and the forms of those words and how do they change depending on what type of word we're talking about. To quickly review, our nouns, again, are person, place, or thing, right? Those are our noun words. And we have singular nouns or we have plural nouns, such as x-ray is singular, x-rays, more than one, it's plural. We also have nouns that are formed from other parts of speech. So to diagnose is a verb, but the diagnosis is a noun. To realize is a verb, realization is a noun. To beautify is a verb, beautification is a noun. So our nouns are formed from other parts of speech, and depending on what um, speech we're talking about, what part of speech we're talking about, it may affect how our words are spelled. So that's what we're going to kind of look at today. Particularly when we talk about medical terms and making those terms plural, we might have different rules. Um, Latin plurals have specific rules for this, so such as auditorium is a Latin word. It's singular, meaning one auditorium. Auditoria is plural, more than one auditorium. Arboretum, symposium, those are also Latin words. Um, symposia would be plural for that. We might just use what we call an anglicized plural or just adding an S. So auditorium is singular, auditorium, plural. So we have a choice there. It could be either the Latin plural of auditoria or an anglicized plural, auditorium. And again, anglicized is just a fancy word for um, putting an S or an ES on the end of a word, like most of our English words. A good policy is to use the um, English plural when it's available, because that's what we, how we talk more. Um, more than the Latin plurals. Some doctors do prefer the Greek or the Latin plurals, so we'll have to listen to their dictation and see if they specifically um, use a Latin plural ending, that's how we're going to transcribe it. And what does our book of style say about it? You're going to want to read chapter 8, the beginning of chapter 8, plurals and possessives. Um, the introduction for it says, the rules for pluralizing ex and expressing possession are pretty straightforward, but critical for the detailed transcriptionists to pay close attention to, particularly as they apply to eponyms, foreign terms, and unusual formations, since authors will not always dictate these accurately. And as far as plurals go, the basic rules for pluralization are outlined in the chapter in Book of Style. When you are unsure about the plural form of a word, consult a dictionary or a reputable resource. When the dictionary lists more than one plural form, the first is usually the preferred one. So that's what our book of style starts as the introduction to um, pluralizing our words here. So let's look at our first rule to pluralizing our medical terms. Ladium becomes ladia. Cranium is singular. Crania, plural. Septum is singular, becomes septa, plural. What's the rule here? Can you see what the, uh, what the common rule is here? Click on the next slide. You're right. When a word ends in um, change the um to a. Pronounce this ah. The single bacterium was isolated. 
the bacteria in question were Escherichia coli or E. coli. So how do we know? How do we know? Is it bacterium? Is it bacteria? Well, we need to look for other words in the sentence to give us a signal and which ones will help us determine. In the first one uh, here, we have the word single. The single bacterium was. So single, of course, means one. So that kind of gives us our clue that it's, it is singular, not plural. And then was and were. Those words also help us. Was if it's singular, were if, if there were more than one. So that will help us if we need to make something pluralized. So watch for those kinds of words to help us to know if it should be a singular or a plural. The Book of Style has a specific um, information in it regarding pluralizing microorganisms on page 177. Read about that. That will help you out with some of those um, types of plural, pluralizing rules. At this point, I'd like you to stop our recording, go to your textbook, and complete self-study 9-1. Do those five questions there that will just reinforce the rules that we just learned, and then start up our uh, video presentation again, and we'll go on to the next rule. Are you ready for our next rule? All right. Plura is singular. Plure is plural. Exilla is singular, exile, plural. Conjunctiva is singular, becomes conjunctive, plural. Sclera becomes sclere. What's our rule here? Think about what's going on and click to the next slide. For this rule, when a word ends in A, form the plural by adding an E. And this might be pronounced as a long I, a long E, or a long A. So as an example, eyes, conjunctive clear. Here we're talking about more than one eye, right? So it's going to be plural. Even though the dictator might say conjunctiva clear, conjunctive. See what I mean about how that word ending can just be swallowed up? We don't always know what they're saying, but we have to know that they we're talking about more than one conjunctiva. So we're going to look for other words within our sentence. What's going to denote plural, um, this being a plural? So both lungs or eyes in the situation, um, look for those key words that we're go are going to help us here and transcribe the correct one, even if it's not dictated that way. Now go to study 9-2 in your textbook and complete those five examples there to reinforce this rule that we just learned. All right, are you ready for the next rule? Coxis is singular, cocci, plural. Embolus, singular. Emboli, plural. Nucleus is singular, becomes nuclei, plural. What's going on here? What's the common denominator? What's the rule? Click to the next slide when you're ready. Our next medical plural rule states that when a word ends in US, change the US to I. Pronounces a long I. This patient was diagnosed as having torn both her medial and lateral menisci. Meniscus, singular. Menisci, plural. So when we have more than one, it's menisci. Change the US to an I. Examination of the skin revealed several pigmented nevi. Nevis, singular. Nevi, plural. Go ahead and do self-study 9-3 in your textbook to reinforce this rule. Of course, as is pretty usual with most of our rules, there are always exceptions to the rules, right? Um, and so some of these are plexus, plexuses, ES on the end. Corpus, corpa, the US becomes an A. Viscous is viscera, so that pretty much changes the entire word. Fetus, fetuses, we just add an ES. There's many of these exceptions also. So until you're really good with them and you really understand and know the rules well, you're going to want to look up your words. You write this rule. Your analysis, singular. Your analyses, plural. Keratosis is singular. Keratoses, plural. Metastasis is singular. Metastases, plural. What's the rule? This medical plural rule states that when a word ends in is, change the is to es. So echomoses were not on both arms. 
an ecchymosis was found on the left arm. We're talking about bruises here. That's what ecchymosis is. So when we're talking about more than one, yes, just one IS. So watch again for these words that are clues for us that denote if they're singular or plural. A or an, they denote singularity, an ecchymosis. And again, the were and was, those words can also help us out. Are we talking about one or are we talking about more than one? And there are lots of these words that end in IS and become an ES. Your analysis, your analyses. Diagnosis, diagnoses. Paralysis, paralyses. Crisis, crises. Synopsis, synopses. Basis and bases, sounds almost the same. Hypothesis, hypotheses. Prognosis, prognoses. So again, lots of these that have the same uh, sound here. Here's a little activity to think about and do in your mind. Uh, make the following sentence plural in all aspects. So the, prog the patient's prognosis is poor. So think about that. How would you make that um, everything in that plural? Go to the next slide. And here's the answer to that sentence. The patient's prognoses are poor. We've got more than one patient, so we're going to add an S on that. It's possessive because the prognoses belong to the patients, so it's S apostrophe. And prognoses, to make that plural, add the ES. And R, we need to always make sure that our verb agrees with our subject. So the prognoses are poor. We wouldn't say the prognoses is poor because that doesn't agree. The patient's prognoses are poor. We're talking about more than one patient, their prognoses. And that's the answer. Hope you got it. Now go to self-study 9-4 in your textbook and do those um, examples there. And you might also decide to do the practice test 9-5. And that would take all of our rules so far to this point and reinforce them. Our medical plural rule number five says that when a word ends in AX or IX, change the X to C and add ES. So thorax is singular, thoraces is plural. We're going to drop that X, change it to a C, and add an ES. So the thorax is, we're talking about one thorax there. All thoraces contain when we see the word all, it makes us think, oh, we're talking about more than one. It denotes plurality. So we would change that X to a C and add ES. Our next medical plural rule says that when a word ends in EX or IX, change the EX or IX to ICES. So apex is singular, apices is plural. And they would be pronounced differently, and that would, would help you out with that word. Uh, so the appendix was, or the appendices were. Our next medical plural rule, when a word ends in en, change the en to ina. Foramen is singular. Foramina is plural. And again, sometimes the entire pronunciation of a word might change. Uh, the lumen or lumina of the catheters had defects. Here we're talking about more than one catheter, right? So we want it to be the plural, the plural one, lumina. So again, uh, look at the words around it in the sentence to decide if it's going to be a singular word or a plural word. And just for your own information, the lumen is a cavity or channel within a tube or tubular organ. So here we're talking about um, the cavity of, of the catheter. A foramen is a natural opening or passage. For our next medical plural rule, when a word ends in MA, change the MA to MATA. So stoma is singular, stomata is plural. And the next two, it kind of depends on how your dictator dictates things. Sarcoma, sarcomata. Carcinoma, carcinomata. There were many fibromata that formed in the soft tissue, um, so that um, fibroma becomes fibromata. And sometimes we can just add an S. 
And again, this is just what we call anglicized words. We just add an S or an ES. So carcinomas, sarcomas, obviously that's what we're going to hear more often here, um, especially in the United States. Um, instead of carcinomata, we might hear carcinomas, and that's fine. Whatever is dictated is what we're going to transcribe. Our next medical plural rule, when the word ends in NX, change the X to G and add ES. So phalanx becomes phalanges, larynx, singular, larynges, plural. Our next medical plural rule, when a word ends in ON, change the ON to A. So criterion becomes criteria, phenomenon becomes phenomena. At this point, go ahead and stop our presentation and do self-study 9-6, just to go through uh, some of the last few rules that we've learned. Our textbook has provided us with a great reference in the back in the appendix area of our textbook. Again, add this page to your information station. These are some great examples of singular and plural words. Um, some are medical and some are English, but take a good look at those. It would be a great addition to your information station. And I hope you're continuing to build those binders as we go along in the class. You know, note that there are many exceptions to these plural forming rules. We've gone through a lot of rules today. Um, even though it's great to learn some rules, you know, it is going to take some time. And it's with anything. Practice will make perfect. And the more you hear them and the more you transcribe them, you'll, you'll know what, uh, what to transcribe out and what needs to be a plural word and what needs to be a singular and what form will they take. But remember that until you feel real confident with them, make sure that you're looking them up in the dictionary because that's really where we're going to go. That's, that's going to be our ultimate authority in how to spell these rules and use them correctly. And as we've mentioned a couple times earlier in our presentation here, many of these Latin-based medical words we can also just add S or ES, which we call anglicized plurals, um, just like we do with any of our regular English words. So aorta is singular. We can say aorte or aortas for our plural form there. Appendix, appendices, appendixes. Carcinoma, carcinomata, or carcinomas. Again, just depending on what's dictated is how we're going to transcribe those plurals there. Um, or just go ahead and add S and ES if um, it's not particularly dictated and you need to make a choice on your Again, outlined in our book of style, it does reiterate that when encountered in dictation, they should be transcribed as dictated, meaning the plurals. If we're going to use the Latin endings or just an S or an ES, what are we going to do? Do whatever is dictated unless that provider is not accurate in their usage. And again, all of these medical terms or medical rules have been outlined in the book of styles. So take a look at that also. Now we're going to shift just a little bit to our English word and just to um, go over some of the rules of making our English words plural. And realize that regular plurals are not shown in the dictionary. So if we're just going to add an S or an ES, not shown in the dictionary. Irregular plurals are shown in the dictionary, such as child is singular, children is um, plural. So again, that's an irregular plural. Goose and geese, mouse and mice, um, those are shown in the dictionary. And remember our uh, variants here, or or also, if something in the dictionary says this entry or this entry, either one can be used, and it's fine. If you have an entry and then the word also, and then another entry, it means that that first one is the preferred. So that's what that means in the dictionary. So for our first English plural rule, add an S to the singular. Myelogram becomes myelograms. Bronchoscope becomes bronchoscopes. Add an ES if the noun ends in S, X, CH, SH, or Z. Stress is singular. Stresses is plural by adding ES. Fax and faxes, crutch and crutches. The fox family or the foxes, notice that one. Um, so we add an ES if it ends in one of those um, different endings, S, X, C, H, S, H, or Z. Our next English plural rule, when a noun ends in a Y preceded by a consonant, change the Y to I and add ES. 
Ovary is sing singular, ovaries, plural. Artery is singular, arteries is plural. So even though we're talking about medical terms here, uh, these are English terms. So we're going to use our English rules. Uh, when a noun ends in Y preceded by a vowel, add an S. Attorney becomes attorneys just by adding an S. And there are very few of these words. Our English plural rule number three, when a noun ends in O um, and is preceded by a consonant, in most cases, ES is added to the singular. Tomato, add an ES, tomatoes. Zero, add an ES and zero. Same thing for potatoes, um, tobaccos, vertigos. Some of those are um, in uh, reference to this rule also. And remember we said in most cases, well, here's some exceptions. Albino, albinos, just an S. Ego, egos. Embryo, embryos, just add an S. Placebo and placebos. So again, if you're not sure, look it up. English rule number four. Most nouns that end in F or F-E are made plural by changing that F or F-E to a V-E-S. Life becomes lives. A swollen calf. Both calves are swollen. Change that F to a V and add E-S. And here are just um, a few more of those types of examples where we um, change the F to a V and E-S on the end. When we want to pluralize compound nouns, we're going to pluralize the main word. So brother-in-law, we're talking about one brother-in-law. If we're talking about more than one, it's brothers-in-law. Notice how we pluralize the first word or the main word in that compound noun. Brothers-in-law is the plural of that. Um, when there is no main word, the plural is formed at the end. So follow-up becomes follow-ups. I'll just add an S. And remember, with follow-up, no more hyphen in, in follow-up. Follow-up is one word, is a noun or an adjective. Um, follow-up is two words, is a verb. So remember that also. Um, but to make it plural, we're just going to add an S. Now we might have some of these plural rules that we've gone over that are actually going to be superseded by our medical transcription rules, um, such as something that was dictated, there were two milliliters drawn. We would transcribe it as there were figure 2 ML drawn. Even though it says milliliters, it's plural, it's just ML, no S at all. Um, like the, the last um, row here shows that S on there, that's not right. Even though it's, it's, it's dictated as a plural, we're going to transcribe it um, just ML. Some words in our language are both singular and plural and spelled the same way such as biceps. The left biceps is larger than the right. Biceps, triceps, quadriceps, all of these are both singular and plural. Arnold Schwarzenegger's biceps are huge. We're talking about both of his arms, right? It's spelled the same as if we're just talking about one biceps. Same thing with forceps. Scissors. Think about the word scissors. Scissors is always the same. The scissors is in the drawer. The scissors are very sharp. Um, spelled the same no matter if it's singular or plural. We also have many nouns that are usually plural, such as feces or scabies, genitalia, measles. Someone doesn't just have the measles, they have the measles, right? Menses, adnexa. So nouns that are usually plural, there's um, quite a list of these also. And in the reverse, we also have nouns that are always singular, such as herpes, news, physics, ascites. Um, no matter how it's used, it's always um, singular. The news is depressing. We don't say the news are depressing, right? Herpes is highly contagious. We don't say herpes are highly contagious, right? So some nouns are always singular. We also need to be aware of some word endings that um, should possibly be changed to an adjective form. Some examples here uh, would be the word microscope. Microscope can be a noun. Microscopic is an adjective form of that. Microscopy is also a noun, but notice that it's changed the ending of it. 
So the first one here, blank review revealed bacteria. What kind of review? Which one, which one of those three words fits that sentence best? Microscopic review revealed bacteria, right? So we're looking for that adjective form in that first one. How about that next sentence there? The blank is an expensive device. Which one of those three? The microscope is an expensive device. So we're talking about a noun there. Um, so we have to look at the words around it in the context of the sentence to determine if we're actually looking at a noun or an adjective. And if it needs to be an adjective, we need to switch it to the adjective form. So when we talk about adjective endings, remember, an adjective qualifies or restricts the noun it modifies. So really, it's, um, it's usually a descriptive type of word. So a small fifth, small is our adjective there. Um, and we might have some confusing sound alikes with these. And we've talked about mucus and mucus. They sound exactly alike, but they are spelled different depending on what type of word we're looking at, if we're looking for a noun or an adjective. So you need to know the difference. Here's an example. The mucous membrane is dry. In this situation, mucus, um, it modifies membrane. Right? It describes what type of membrane it is. It's a mucous membrane. It is an adjective. So we use the O-U-S ending on it. Spitting mucus on the street is unhygienic. Here, it's a thing, right? Person, place, or thing. It's a thing. It's a noun. So we want to do M-U-C-U-S. And I've um, told you before, you're going to see this on a quiz. You'll probably see it on the final. Be able to write a sentence using these words correctly. And be aware that many dictionaries don't list that adjective form of the noun. Um, so you need to know the base noun and how to convert it to that adjective ending. Hylum is a noun. Hyler is the adjective. And you may just need to know that. Your textbook also provides some great charts um, regarding noun endings and adjective endings. There are some great um, charts on these Pages 241, 242 gives you the ending, uh, what the meaning of that ending is, and then an example of what you might see for that type of an ending. These would be great charts, again, to um, include into your information binders. Um, you can either rip them out of the page here or make a copy of them, but they would be great um, as you're trying to go through and learn the different endings and the meanings and uh, when you might use them for um, pluralizing words. And the next section of our presentation is just some extra information that's not um, actually found in our textbook, but is very important to know. And when we're talking about dividing words or dividing um, terms or dividing information at the end of a line, what I'm talking about is you know how our word processing packages, our, our word um, packages will automatically do word wrap, right? When we get to the end of a line, it automatically goes to the next line. We don't have to hit a carriage return like we used to when we uh, learned on typewriters, uh, which many of you probably have never typed on a typewriter before. Some of you maybe have. Um, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to hit enter. And we're not supposed to actually hit enter at the end of a line um, when we're doing our transcription, when we're in our Word document. So let's talk about a few instances where we can't divide information from one line to the next. And for the most point, most part, we are not going to divide words using hyphens. Um, we're going to avoid it if at all possible. It's really time consuming to go through and hyphenate your words. Um, and again, unhyphenated words are so much more easier to read. And notice that newspapers and magazines are not a good model to this because they hyphenate a lot of words because they're trying to get everything to fit in their columns. For the most part, we are not going to divide words uh, from one line to the next using hyphens. Dates are another thing that we don't always want to divide from one line to the next. We're going to avoid it if we can. If we absolutely have to, if it looks very weird to, um, to not bring the entire date down to the next line, uh, we can divide between the day and the year, such as November 7, comma, on one line, divided 2010 on the next line. We would not want to divide between the month and the day. That just looks very weird and very hard to read. 
names are also information that we really don't like to divide from one line to the next if we can at all help it. If you do need to, we can divide before the surname. The surname is just your last name. So Patricia J. Suber, we can um, divide between J and Suber. We would not want to uh, divide between Patricia and J. That would look very odd, very weird, very hard to read. Um, and long names, where we might end up having to divide it more often, can be divided between like the title and the name, such as Sir General on one line, Howard Coop on the next line. And some information we never ever should divide from one line to the next because it's so important to be read together. Such as word sets, 25 milligrams um, transcribed as the word set 25 on one line, milligrams on the next. We don't want to divide between those parts um, of the word set at all so that um, it's read together. It needs to be kept together. We do not want to divide numbers. So 200,000, don't divide between those. Make sure the entire figure goes to the next line. Don't divide contractions. Wouldn't. We wouldn't want to uh, divide con contractions at all. And again, for the most part, we are not going to even transcribe tra uh, con contractions, right? We're going to spell out could not. And then that would, would avoid that issue of dividing contractions. We should not divide street addresses except after the street name and the word street, or the word avenue, or the word boulevard. So 3550 Anderson Street, after Anderson, we can put street on the next line. 1212 East Washington on one line, avenue on the next. Or we can go between East and Washington there for that example. Likewise, identifying information should not be um, divided from one line to the next. Information that needs to be read together for clarity, such as two centimeters. We would not want two on one line and centimeters on the next. Page 12, same thing there. It needs to be read as a unit. Eight pounds, three ounces. Keep that all together. Don't divide it from one line to the next. And as always, what's been going on in the news? What's, what's new for professional development? What have you heard that's going on? It's usually some kind of big story going on in the news regarding health. This time of the year, a lot of times we hear about um, flu shots and different flu clinics going on, or maybe there's a new strain going around. Um, also, I found a new term, cyberchondria, and I have a little video clip here for you to take a look at from MSNBC. Take a look at that, click on that link, and you can read about this new, um, newly diagnosed type of condition. And when you think about it, it would be very easy for this to happen when we've got all this information from our internet available at our fingertips. Easy to think we have all these different diagnoses and problems um, when we read about it and hear about it on the internet. So take a look at that link. I think you'll find that um, to be somewhat entertaining. And thanks so much for joining me this week for our lecture on word endings, and have a great week, everyone.